Hi, I'm Chris from Where Light Meets Dark. Last year I put some audio recorders out in the Tasmanian wilderness in the hope of recording something that could be the Tasmanian Tiger's call. So today I'm going to show you what the process is like uh, where I analyse the recordings that were made. To begin with, I'm going to show you a recording that was actually made here in New South Wales where I live um, so that you get a feel for how that works and then we'll take a look at some Tassie audio. So what we have on the screen in front of us is a spectrogram. It's, um, it's a visualization of an audio recording that was taken using one of these recorders. And you can see on the left axis here the frequency of any sounds. Along the bottom you'll see there's a sort of a dark pink band. That's kind of background noise. Um, for example, wind or rain will tend to leave this signature down the bottom. Um, up here where it says 4.5K, um, you've got little vertical bars. Uh, in this case, these uh, could be insects or frogs or things like that. We'll have a listen. Um, here I've put a label to say dog bark, and that's what a dog bark looks like. So if I start playing the audio from here... Now, I can zoom in on this audio. Across the top you can see 38 minutes into the recording and 40 seconds to 50 seconds. That's 10 seconds of audio there. But if we zoom in nice and close, it stretches out these, um, this spectrogram, you'll see that there's a certain shape. Firstly, there's a, a solid bar along the bottom and then there's another one above it. And, and you can see that in the first bark, second bark, third bark, fourth bark. So these are like uh, different bands or different frequencies that come out when the dog barks. And you might see that the, the strong shape at the bottom here is it's kind of like an upside down letter U it's, or a hill, it's, it's a curve. So the sound of the bark starts at a low pitch, goes up a bit and then back down. Now these shapes and also where they occur on the spectrogram in terms of uh, the frequency, which is how high it is on this uh, chart, uh, characteristic for certain calls. So, as you can see, the dog's bark looks similar every time, and it's in the same place on the graph. I'll zoom back out here a little. And again, when, when the time is compressed like that, they just look like vertical marks. It's only when you zoom in that you can see the detail. But if we back up a little bit, I've got another animal which was recorded here. Well, firstly, yeah, here is where the, uh, there's this frog call. So you see this pattern up here, much higher pitch than with the dog. And again, let's take another look up close. You can see some of those go uh, sort of in a rising fashion. They, whoops, a bit too far. Some are fairly straight, some are short, but that's a typical frequency there for the frog. Now, let me zoom out a little bit again. And I'll take you to another piece of audio, way back at the start here. And this was actually quite a surprise. I heard this call um, just after I'd started recording. Uh, well, what we have here, these shapes, which have all these frequencies in there as well, that's actually human speech. So there's a couple of people standing around where this recorder was. I just put it out, in fact, on the roof of the car outside the farmhouse and uh, people were chatting just in the background. Um, and again, you can see the frog calls. There we go. These larger marks here. So not like the dog, where the dog's frequency was down around this 1000 hertz, 1 kilohertz. Uh, it's shifted up the axis a little bit further. If you play that, it's a very different sounding. <laughs> jump across and play this one also. You can see that talking again across the bottom here and you can see the frog calls up here and these three calls here are actually the eastern barn owl getting a bit of a screech which was cool because I've never seen one um, at that location. It's a family property outbush. So let's now take a look at some of the Tasmanian audio um, and this is kind of cool because with this audio, you're going to see 
uh, exactly for the first time uh, the audio. You're going to hear it. I haven't heard this before. Um, this particular track, yes, I have labeled it. So I'm going to load in another one for you. Um, and you can see the process that I go through. Well, firstly, this is not a spectrogram, but we'll get to that. I'll add in a new track. So I'm going to import audio. And I'm going to pick it from the date this was recorded in April last year. And we're talking file that completed at 8.57 in the morning. So that should be loading up now. It takes a few seconds to copy the file and load it in. So what I do is I have a project file here and one project covers one day. And I've set up the audio recorders so that they're recording 24-7, but after every hour, it'll just put a break in the recording. It'll save that audio as a single file, and then the next hour starts again. So when I'm analyzing, I set up a project. It'll have 24 recordings in it, 24 hours from the day. So now we've seen that load up in here. First thing is, if I scroll up the window, you can see all the prior days have been loaded in here. So I don't want to play all of them simultaneously. So I hit the solo button. So we just hear this audio. Now, instead of viewing the waveforms, we'll look at the spectrogram, which is what we just saw before. I'll add in a new label track down the bottom, and I'll make a note that the audio I'm analyzing just above this uh, label track was modified at 0857 in the morning on that day. The audio itself is quite soft, so we bump up the volume using this slider here. And then I just give the chart a bit more vertical height so that I can see a bit better what is in this audio. And you can see all these bars coming up from the bottom of the audio, um, and there's not a lot happening across the top. Now this is one hour's worth of recording on a screen width, but to really see the detail, we want to zoom in. So I pick my zoom tool and I hit one, two, three, four, five, and zoom in a lot closer, and drag back over to the start. So here we are. I've not heard this audio. This is a first for me but I can tell you what a lot of this will be. This vertical bar here, just a very thin um, sort of mark on the spectrogram. If I play it, you'll hear like a, a tock or a tick sound, just a very short sound. And that's basically, I don't know, a seed falling from a gum tree onto the recorder itself. Um, maybe a little leaf or a branch in the wind that gets blown and, and just taps into the recorder. Now over on the right here, you'll see these um, sort of large mountains coming up from the bottom. Now this is typically uh, the sound of wind, and I'll play that. So, so that's kind of how I can look at this audio and straight away tell I, it's just wind, uh, you know, something's hit the recorder, and I can just scan through a whole hour of recording in just a matter of a minute or two. And I would do this typically, looking for anything that looks like an animal call. Now, we don't, oh, and we do see something in here as well. Let me just get that. I'm going to actually listen a bit closer with the earpieces and play that. Okay, it's very faint, um, however, I can make out it's a bird call, and to me that sounds like green rosella. So I'll just simply add a label in there, and I'll keep scanning through looking for more audio. And again, you'll see these little marks here, not very obvious perhaps. Um, if I zoom in, you'll see more of it, but um, let me play this one. Same bird. It's a similar appearance to these marks, and at least two came up. So I don't need to sit there and listen to it all because, after all, I'm looking for Tasmanian tigers. A couple of little marks in here. Okay, and they're up at the 3K mark. They're a higher pitch, and that to me sounds like Crescent Honey Eater. Just a couple of chip-chip calls. And each 
call, as I said, will have a characteristic appearance. So what we do know of the Tasmanian tiger is that it had a double yip call. Yip, 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 yip. And what I will be looking for is something around the bottom of the chart that comes in pairs. Now, you occasionally will see some of these, these marks here. Again, it's just the wind. And I know that because it goes to the very bottom of the chart. If I analyse, for example, a terrier dog or the dog bark that you saw at the start of this video, the calls actually sit up above the bottom of the chart. So things that come in from the bottom would be airplanes, wind, rain, ambient sort of weather sounds, background, uh, white noise. And again here, these vertical bars, something must be knocking into the bottom. too exciting. So ordinarily I wouldn't stop and listen to that. We would just scroll through. As I said, I haven't actually heard this recording, haven't looked at it. If we find a double yip here, I think we'll all be celebrating. It's a pretty quiet day. This can be good or bad. This one's a bit more interesting because it doesn't go to the very bottom here, this vertical bar. It still just looks like it might be just a click, just some kind of click sound. And we scan, scan through. Okay, that one's nice and easy. There's not a lot of background noise, so we get to the end of that hour pretty quickly. So that's basically what I'm doing in looking for these uh, audios. Now, if I collapse the audio here and here and so on, up through the file, through the project I should say, you'll see all the documentation that I've made against all of the uh, all of the audio in this project or all of the audio recorded on this day up to this point. So if I zoom back out again, oops. Ah, which we have. Yeah, so in the hour before, I've got a few notes here. Bird, carillon, carillon, and a squeak. Let's have a quick look at this audio. Zoom in. Firstly, convert that across to a spectrogram again. And there's the, the notes I made before. So, zoom in here. Okay, there's a few marks here. And I've made the note already, this is the carillon. I'll play that. Uh -huh. There you go, made the mistake. This audio is muted, as you see, and we're still playing the one I was analysing a moment ago. So let's make this solo, and we'll be listening to this audio. Okay, that was very faint in the background. I do have carillons a bit closer. Here's another bird call. And so on. And we had some ah fast squeak. Is this a ringtail possum? Now this is in the daytime, so ringtail hard to say. One more time. And you can take a look at what does that audio look like. Just two vertical bands there. Squeak squeak. So, I guess two bands is what we're after, but that is not the sound of a double yet. Okay, that's me. Thank you for watching, and I've got a lot of uh, audio to go through and scan from here on in. Thank you.